This video is sponsored by Brightland. I'm going to attempt to do this review without giggling like a little boy through the entire episode, but um, it's going to be tough <laughs> because this is a very, very big banana. I mean, the length of it is normal, maybe a little bit bigger than normal, but the the girth is um <laughs> the name of this banana doesn't help <laughs> because well the more polite name for it is hua moa which i'm sure i'm saying wrong or also it's known as the hawaiian plantain but it also has the name rompe culo which because this is the first minute of the episode, I actually can't say it without alerting the YouTube algorithm gods. So I'm just going to show you what that translates to on Google Translate. This is what it means. Yeah, and this banana was very generously sent to me by Miami Fruit. Org. So if you would like to buy a banana that is big enough to feed like four people, they are available on their website. So Miami Fruit, thank you very much for uh, so many strange bananas over the years. And this one definitely is the one of the strangest. A while back, I did try something called the Horn Plantain which is also known for being extraordinarily big. The difference with this one, though, is that this can be eaten as a dessert banana. It doesn't have to be cooked. Now, I believe that this banana here is a dual-purpose banana. So this can be used both as a cooking banana or as a sweet banana. I mean, technically, all bananas and all plantains can be eaten uh, raw, or ripe depending on when you ripen it. You can eat a plantain if you ripen it like a really long time until it turns completely black, but they don't really taste so great that way. Uh, this one, people like it both ways. I've had these cooked green and they are good. They're very similar to regular plantains, but one thing that's nice about it is that they don't have a lot of fiber to them, so it crisps up really well. So it actually works a little bit better than the green plantains that you get at a supermarket. Tastes about the same to me, but the, uh, the texture of it is really nice. Okay, one thing about this banana that I have a serious problem with is that you cannot open it from the stem end. Opening it from the stem end, uh, it, it can be done, but it is very difficult to do. You actually do need to open it from the bottom which is something that I fight people on because a lot of times people say whenever I'm opening up a regular banana and I open it up this way, people say, oh, you're doing it wrong. You gotta open it up from this end. And I just ignore that and continue to do it by the stem end because I don't think it really matters. Uh, with this one, it actually does matter. It actually does matter. Uh, like if I give this a good shot, it. I mean, it could do it like in time, but it's it's just not really a good banana for opening up that way. If if I were to really work at that, I could do it, but I would turn like half of this banana into mush if I were to do that. So we're gonna have to listen to all the comments and uh, actually peel it from the bottom like this, and that works just fine.
This olive oil is really fresh. Olive oil that you get from the supermarket is very often far from fresh. Bottles can sit on the shelf for months, even years, slowly becoming more and more terrible. Not only that, but very often olive oils that you get from the store are actually mixed with other inferior oils, so you don't know exactly what you're getting. That is not the case with Brightland. This is made from heirloom olives that are locally sourced from organic farms in California. It's really, really fresh stuff, and there are no additives, and there's no junk included. When I have a really good quality olive oil like this, I don't like to overcomplicate things. So I'm going to take some of this garlic-infused olive oil and just put it on top of a potato. Mm. That has a really nice, strong flavor. It's nutty, it's buttery, it's olivey, it's garlicky. Doesn't need salt or butter or anything, just potato and oil. You can find out more about Brightland's high quality products and also get 10% off your order if you check out my link in the description below. And another size comparison there. This guy compared to a Cavendish banana. <laughs> it's, uh, I feel like I'm making the Cavendish banana feel inadequate because it is like, the the thickness of this is like at least three maybe four cavendishes worth of uh, of banana there the coloring on this banana as you can see has a little bit of a peach tone to it that the cavendish does not have and um yeah i don't want to get demonetized so i'm going to not eat this banana how you normally would eat a banana i'm going to go in on the side It's good. It is definitely better than one of these. This has um, a flavor in it that I've noticed with a lot of bananas, and it's a flavor that I like. It's a berry flavor. Now, technically, bananas are berries, but I mean like more of a traditional berry that you would think of. It's like maybe something like strawberry or raspberry. It's got a little hint of that, including some of the tartness that you would get from a strawberry. It's got a little hint of like, a, not like a citrusy kind of tartness, but like a berry kind of tartness, if that makes sense. The, uh, the texture on it is really creamy. It's similar to like an ice cream banana. It's uh, got like very little resistance when you eat it, very little fiber when you eat it. The sweetness of this banana is comparable to a Cavendish banana. It's, uh, it's pretty, pretty close. Uh, what's different though is that that tartness a uh, Cavendish banana usually does not have much tartness to it. Maybe like a little bit, maybe like a one or something. This is more like, um, that's not a lot, but let's, let's give it a three. And one thing that's really notable about this banana is that although it is a dual purpose banana, it excels in both which is usually not the case. Usually if you get a dual purpose banana, it might be better as a plantain, you gotta cook it, but you can eat it raw, or it's better raw, but you can cook it. This is really good in both, and I would say that as a dessert banana, it is better than a lot of dessert bananas that you get. And as a cooking banana, it's better than a lot of plantains that you get. So this is something that would be good equally. You could use it for both, and it's gonna taste better than things that you get from the supermarket. Another reason why you wouldn't want to be eating it like head on, like you would eat a normal banana. I mean, besides the fact that that would be a choking hazard and you wouldn't be able to do it in public, it also has a core to it. There is a core inside the uh, interior of this banana. So the better way to eat this is to eat it from the side and then throw away that core when you're done eating it. You know, that is a remnant from when bananas had seeds. You can still find bananas with seeds in them. I have uh, found them in the past and those tend to have a big core to them as well. So it doesn't have seeds to it, but it does have like a tough bit in the center, which is not super appealing. Besides that, this thing is great. Uh, the flavor is good. The texture is good. It can be used for cooking. It can be used sweet and it's got a it's huge, you know, and a lot of times some of the weirder bananas that I've had in the past will like look really interesting, but maybe have a little bit of a lacking flavor. This is one that's interesting, but also is really tasty. So that's pretty cool to find. And uh, once again, thank you to MiamiFruit.org for sending this to me. Thank you everybody for watching and um, 
I will see you next time. Thanks once again to Brightland for sponsoring this video. I would like to give a big shout out to Lofty Rex and Smarter Every Day. They are mega patrons over on Patreon.com. Patreon.com is basically how I can afford to go on all the adventures I do on this channel. So if you enjoy my series and you want to help support me, check out the link in the description below. If you don't want to go on Patreon, I also have t-shirts for sale like this one here, the Durian Anatomy shirt. That is available on my website, which I also put in the description below. Thanks so much, everybody. See you next time.